Hi, my name is Sherry Pittman. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use the different forms available on the Create panel. In part one, we went over the basics of starting a family, starting with your template, defining what the origin is, you know, setting up the framework basically for it, and doing a simple extrusion. So now I want to go over some follow-up on that, so the different types of forms that we can use and talking about, you know, when we should use a void versus, you know, just editing something that's already there, an extrusion, for example. When we're creating our families, the one thing that we want to be very aware of is the size of the family. So we want to keep it as small as possible, under a meg, if, you know, is the goal really, and under a half a meg is even better. So there's some ways that we can do this that make the family more lean, and some of that has to do with how you model. So if, for example, I take a look at my floor plan, and let's flex this so it's a little bit bigger. Let's make this four feet. And let's say that I want this box to have a hole in it. And we could do a void, but we could also just change the extrusion itself, which is going to be lighter in the family. Now, how we can modify this depends on how it was built originally. So when I did this box, I did it from the floor plan view. So if I wanted to cut a hole in the front, then I would have to use a void, or I would have to recreate you know, the extrusion and do it from an elevation view. So just kind of keep that in mind in mind, using a void is going to be, you know, a little bit heavier, not, you know, necessarily extremely, but heavier than it is to just modify the extrusion. So it's similar to what you would have on, let's say, a floor or a ceiling. So if I edit the extrusion and I draw some shape inside of this, it's going to create an opening. So I'll just do a circle in this example and we'll finish. And if I take a look in 3D, you can see that this now has a hole in it. Whereas I, you know, if I wanted to do it from the front, I would have to do a void. So just kind of keep those kind of things in mind when you're modeling. Let's go over some of the different types of forms that you can work with. And for now, I'm just going to focus on, well, first I'm going to focus on the extrusions, you know, or the solids rather than the voids. So we've already done an extrusion, and we've already done an extrusion with a hole in it. So let's work from there. Let's add to this, and we're going to do a sweep. Now your sweep you can do a couple different ways. You can sketch the line. So if I'm in a plan view, I can sketch the boundary of where I want this to go. Or I can define a path that exists in the model already. So I'm going to pick this one. And we'll just pick this line, these two lines. They have to be connecting. Like if I try and pick this one, it's not going to work. It's going to tell me that I can only have one loop. So you'll continue and let's escape twice and just delete this line. So there's my path for this extrude for this sweep. So let's go ahead and finish. Keep in mind that your first pick or your first draw is the starting point of where the profile is going to be. So you'll kind of want to do it on a, a plane that's easy to draw the profile in. So let's finish this part. You can sketch a profile. So just draw something in a plan view. It'll want me to go to a plan view, ideally. It would let you do it from a 3D view, but it's harder to draw from here. Or I can load a profile. So if I load a profile, you'll just go to your out-of-the-box content. If it's not there, you'll have to create something. But let's just do some finished carpentry, I guess. And it really doesn't matter. I'll just pick anything. It doesn't have to make sense. It's just really about process. So let's go ahead and assign that profile. And if I zoom in here, you can kind of see which way it's going. So you see that you've got some controls, and you can flip it, 
or you can offset it, you know, you can change its angle, you know, so whatever you need to do. And sometimes it's easier to just go ahead and finish this so you can see what you get. So you can see that it follows that path. Now there's going to be times where it's going to break because it just can't do it for whatever reason. It can't converge on itself that way. So sometimes you'll have to do this in, you know, some experimental stages, basically. Okay, so we've done our sweep. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And let's do a swept blend. So it's essentially the same as the sweep, except that the beginning point and the end point are going to be two different shapes. So I'm going to keep it simple in here and just do one path. And again, you could draw it or you could pick it. So let's finish. And then I'm going to do my profile. So let's load another profile in here. And same type of family, probably. And we had finished carpentry. And let's do crown five. OK, so I'm going to set profile one to be three and profile two to be five. And then just go ahead and finish. And you'll be able to see that it's going to basically create this shape from start to end with the two different shapes. Let's try a blend next. So a blend is going to be similar to the swept blend, other than it's not going to follow a specific path. It's just going to have a different base than it has top. So I'm going to go to my floor plan view. And we'll do a blend. And you'll notice if it says edit top, that means I'm doing the bottom. And if it says edit bottom, then I'm doing the top. So just kind of keep that in mind. So we'll do a polygon and snap to the center of this. And I guess we'll keep it this way. And then you'll say edit top. And then you can do whatever shape you want to. So let's snap to the center again. So SC is snap to center. Let's change the number to five. And then just pick, you know, whatever you want it to be. And let's finish. And I'm sure I'm going to have to move this up or stretch it because it's in the middle of my extrusion at the moment. So let's look in elevation. And again, we would want to tie this to, you know, reference planes, but let's just stretch this up here so that you can see it in 3D. So you can see that it's just going to combine those two shapes. And you'll notice also that I not only changed the shape, but I kind of twisted it around from where it was. Last but not least, we have a revolve. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And I'm going to go to the front elevation because I'm going to draw something on top here. So we'll go to the Create panel, select Revolve. You're going to, you can do the boundary line or the axis line, you know, second or first, it doesn't matter. I usually do the axis line first just because it makes more sense to me. So let's put the axis line here. And then let's draw our boundary. So you'll, you're looking at, you know, a section of this, basically a profile of whatever it is you're going to create. So I'm going to do a line. And we'll just make up some sort of shape. And how about an arc? And it could be hollow too. So if I wanted to, you know, kind of go along these edges, that's something you could do as well. So let's finish. And if I take a look in 3D, there's my revolve. Again, you would want to be specific about where this is positioned. This is positioned at the center, basically. So, you know, 
keep in mind all of these things. I'm just really showing you process on how to use some of these tools right now. The last thing we're gonna cover in this part two step of our family matters is working with a void. And as I mentioned earlier, it's preferable not to use voids if we don't have to, but there's gonna be times when it's necessary. So I'm gonna use a void form and I'm just gonna do a void extrusion. We went over the process for creating all these different shapes and it's the same in a void as it is for you know an extruded element. So then I'm gonna set my work plane. So I'm gonna pick a plane and I'm gonna pick this plane, maybe. And again, you would wanna work with, you know, picking from your reference planes so that we have control parametrically on where this is positioned, as well as depth potentially. But for this example, I'm just gonna really show you how we can, you know, create something and have it cut the, the geometry when we aren't able to do it any other way. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish so you can see that this cut through and it didn't go all the way through and that has to do with you know what the extrusion end is so if i only want it to be that deep you know we could tie it to a parameter that tells it how deep that hole is going to be or you can go to an elevation view and then drag it you know if it's going to go all the way through drag it to the reference plane where we want it to end <clears throat> 